And as I said, we came from Sweden to Finland, and now we have a ride back to uh, Estonia. Uh, so I'm very, very uh, happy to also ask Oleg uh, Tsaikovsky, uh, who is the head of Ministry of uh, Education and Research Working Group on AI and Education in Estonia. And he is going to talk about the future trends uh, in secure AI-supported education. So, Oleg, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Annette. Uh, it's, um, you know, there are so many great ideas already formulated here. So uh, it's, uh, thank you, Gunnar, Sarkio, uh, Maria for that. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy to start to build up from here. Uh, and um, and uh, let me maybe start from, uh, I mean, we all know that uh, education is uh, an extremely conservative area. And it should be. So no doubts here, it should be a very uh, conservative area. So, uh, but um, what I truly believe in is that AI today in this extremely conservative area is the single biggest game changer for centuries. Let me repeat that. So AI is the single biggest game changer for, for centuries. So I think that the only one what is a little bit maybe comparable with that was say 200, 250 years ago where all the notion of encyclopedias start to raise up and they changed our understanding about what exactly education has to be, so what we have to focus on. But, uh, but today we have a lot of positive uh, we have a lot of positive uh, promises and, uh, and expectations towards AI. So just try to imagine, for instance, the 24-7 available, uh, I would say, uh, in um, uh, absolutely indefinitely patient uh, uh, teacher assistant what is available for kids 24-7. And I'm stressing here the word of uh, assistant because, uh, because I truly believe in the notion that the teacher will not be replaced by AI. So in overall, kind of in this dilemma of uh, uh, person versus machine, so I rather believe that there is no dilemma person versus machine. I rather believe to the dilemma that, that quite uh, in a closest future, the persons who are able to use the machines on the right way, they will have enormous advantages, advantages over the persons who don't uh, know how to use machines properly. And it comes not only to the teachers, so it comes to whatever areas we can imagine, doctors, lawyers, I mean, lawyer who can use properly, even chat GPT, the easiest one maybe, uh, is uh, in times more efficient than lawyer can, who cannot use that uh, tools, right? So uh, just try to imagine that we have teacher assistant who is able to be 24 seven available for students, <laughs> helping them to, uh, to cover certain curriculums. So again, it's not instead of teachers, it's rather in addition to teachers, available 24-7. Or for instance, just try to imagine this absolutely unprecedented level and capacity of analytics what we have today. So, uh, or uh, for instance, the way how we can, I mean, if we combine just two previous two points, so we can lead us to the uh, notion of the uh, personalized learning path. By the way, Estonia is already today pretty advanced in that and moving uh, forward with that. So uh, creating this personalized, uh, or say, preparing the way for, uh, for moving this personalized uh, learning path for students. So where you can try to understand where are the gaps in previous uh, knowledges of persons, meaning that, I mean, even if you see the uh, student who has uh, who has already has uh, challenges with uh, tackling the uh, the ohm uh, law for example in physics then you can understand that actually it's not about the ohm law but there are some kind of mathematics uh, challenges what appeared two three years ago so you can understand where exactly these challenges are there but in this same situation, we have a lot of challenges, right? So uh, we have challenges for teachers. Uh, for instance, uh, we, uh, we need to deal with education. I've seen as a practitioner teacher, I've seen a lot of examples of teachers who has just tried a little bit, just try this water of, uh, for example, chat GPT, did it slightly on the wrong way, didn't got the expected results. And as a result of that, they are saying that they start to keep saying that, I mean, it's everything, it doesn't work. You know, so uh, there is no sense in that. So uh, it doesn't work at all. 
So we have to, to educate the teachers. We have to educate the teacher about the, I mean, the old notion of cyber awareness uh, with regards to that, because there are certain kind of cyber sec, uh, um, cyber sec threats around uh, all this notion of AI. For example, I mean, uh, there are a lot of kind of these uh, cyber sex threats. Uh, then uh, there are definitely uh, challenges for students, no doubts here. So, I mean, we have to educate students as well. I mean, students are much more advanced than teachers today, but at the same time, it's still, it's a matter of educating students. It's maybe rather not about the technicalities, how to prompt, but maybe rather kind of about how to learn, how to use this capacity what we have today, right? So how to use it so that instead of providing you the solution, uh, the, the same kind of uh, Gemini or Chat GPT will be offering you step by step learning paths, how to resolve that so that you can learn something out of that. So, this is something what we have to teach to the people, to the students. I think that maybe the, uh, the most important and uh, the biggest threat what I see in the AI, and this is something what, what Gunnar mentioned uh, a slightly different way as well, is uh, that, uh, that there is a temptation from student sites to outsource the process of thinking to ChatGPT. And this is kind of the biggest threats what we, uh, what we face today. And this leads us to the point that we have to start to teach to the students again, uh, all this notion of metacognition, meta thinking, and so on and so on. So just trying to understand, we, we have to include that as a courses in our uh, schools. Um, I'm, uh, I'm re really kind of practitioner teacher of physics in one of the schools in high school. So I'm staying in front of class more or less on a daily basis. And in our school, in high school, we already introduced the courses of metacognition, meta thinking. Uh, I keep thinking as a headmaster of the same school, I have thinking, uh, uh, I keep thinking about the fact that maybe we need to introduce certain elements already earlier, not in high school, not in 11th grade, but somewhere say around the sixth grades. Uh, and trying to kind of to understand to the kids how to think, how to ask the right questions, how to note what you are doing when you think that you are thinking. Uh, and maybe at the end to explain to the kids that thinking is fun. This is something what is kind of, a, it may be the sounds slightly ridiculous, but thinking is fun. So uh, I've already seen that from my point of view, that I mean, when even the kind of the, the calculus, so that you are able to calculate things uh, on top of your mind, I mean, this is fun as well. And this is something what when, when, we, when we start to try it with the kids, then in certain stages, they understand that it gives them certain advantages in negotiations, in, uh, I don't know, in, in grocery shop, wherever, if you can just calculate kind of fast. And the same fun is with thinking. So introducing all this notion of metacognition, that's a very important uh, point as well. Let's uh, maybe make no mistake. I mean, so uh, there, the school with kind of at the age of AI will be different school, right? So we have to think on changing of the methodology of the schools. So for instance, I mean, the old uh, good, well-known homework in quite a lot of areas doesn't make any sense anymore. Again, so as a teacher of physics, I can just prove, it's, it's like this, to prove it that, uh, that uh, the 11th grade high school Estonian uh, language uh, text exercises on physics, even on, on kind of on a high level, Olympiad level, is resolved by ChatGPT like this. Right? So meaning that it doesn't make any sense anymore to give the homework, classical, conventional homework uh, to the students at home. Uh, and, uh, and it means that we have to change the process how we teach. For example, again, in my school, we introduced already in quite a lot of uh, areas, we introduced the notion of the flipped classroom where uh, there are kind of no classical homeworks, but the, I mean, it's, it's, it's a manageable process, uh, but the flipped classroom assumes that, that, that they are studying uh, by the certain process, students are studying uh, the, uh, the new topics in advance, and when they are coming to the class, then we're making experiments, we're resolving some exercise, we're having Socratic discussions on a physics level, kind of Socratic type of discussions. I mean, why do we need, for example, Lorentz force? So Lorentz force is not something what was just developed by physicians, but this is something what is in every single phone. So I'm speaking right now with you because of Lorentz force. And to have these discussions with the students, to, to, to build these kind of bridges uh, for them to understand how exactly all this stuff works, this is something what we, uh, thanks to AI to a certain extent, we may have more time for these kind of discussions. It's uh, quite a wrong understanding from 
from some people that, I mean, AI will lead us to a situation that students are sitting behind the computers. So I rather believe to the notion that it will give us an opportunity to have more of these Socratic discussions, to, uh, to spend more time in, uh, in discussing uh, the things what are really matters. Yeah. Thanks so much. Good. Thank you very much, Oleg Esvo. Once again, I'm coming with the, the same sentence. You can ask questions from Oleg Esvo. Uh, you should have, again, the QR goats there. I'm pleased to use that chance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the very first one here uh, that I actually wrote myself so that I would remember that question as well. Um, in terms of, like, you talked about, like, uh, the teachers and, and that we need to change the way we teach now. How, like, what do you think? How much kind of openness do we have from the teacher side? or kind of the willingness to be ready for, for like uh, learning to teach differently today? Well, teachers, um, at least uh, as far as I have seen up to so far, teachers are very open to that. I mean, so definitely, I mean, as is every society, you, uh, you may find some kind of uh, black sheep, mm -hmm. But uh, overall, I would say that the temperature here is uh, pretty uh, comfortable. So teachers are uh, willing to understand, and, and especially in situation when they see that this is something what is inevitable. So we have to change the way how we are thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, in that situation, I mean, they are open absolutely to discuss this, all these topics. Yeah. But in Come terms on, of uh, what, what can we actually do, let's say, from the, uh, from the public sector in, in order to really kind of get the teachers ready for, for, these, uh, for these changes as well? Should there be much more of a programs uh, actually kind of started also from, uh, from the Minister of Education? Uh, should we look over the entire way of, of teaching, the, uh, the way we create, for example? Uh, in a panel, we will actually talk about this a bit of more details as well in terms of like the future grading uh, as well. Uh, but, but, uh, but how do you feel about that? Yeah, um, in, um, we have a very interesting, um, very interesting team, or say think tank under the Ministry of Education, uh, thinking on uh, how the education process will be changing, uh, not only in Estonia, but in Estonia in particular. So for example, our good colleague Mario is a member of this team here as well, who is sitting, and, and I'm a member of this team. And we are kind of, uh, as we speak, we're making the proposals to the uh, ministry, so what could be changed in the process. So, for instance, introducing this uh, the same notion of the massive mm -hmm. uh, trainings for teachers, right? Mm -hmm. So, including certain elements of the digital competency to the to the teachers' competency models, right? So, and so on and so on. So, we, we're making kind of uh, as we speak, we're making these offers to the ministry. All right, uh, then I would uh, wrap it up uh, from from uh, that side here. Once again, a big applause to Oleg uh, for his overview. Thank you.